welcome to children's worship. Children's worship is going to look different today, but that's because it needs to look different today because there's an important thing we need to talk about. Let's start by listening to two stories, one from the Bible and one other one. Love your enemies. Jesus taught people everywhere about God. Jesus' teachings were different from what people had heard before. This made people curious about what Jesus had to say. One day, Jesus was talking about how to treat your enemies. Jesus said, if someone hurts you, don't hurt them back. Wow, that was different. Then Jesus said, if someone asks for your help, say, sure. People hadn't always thought of like that before. And remember to share what you have with other people, he said. Hmm, Jesus had the people thinking. Then Jesus said a very important thing. Everyone says, love your friends and hate your enemies. I say, love your enemies and pray for people who are mean to you. This is what really makes God happy. The things Jesus said changed the way people thought about treating others. Stolen Words She came home from school today, skipping and dancing, humming a song under her breath, clutching a dream catcher she had made from odds and ends, bits of string, plastic beads, and brightly colored feathers. Her glossy braids danced against her shoulders, swaying with her, black as a raven's wing. Grandpa, she asked, clutching his hand spinning under his arm before dropping it again. How do you say grandfather in Cree? He stopped breathing for a moment, a lifetime to a seven-year-old. He looked down at her sadly. I don't remember, he answered. I lost my words a long time ago. A frown clouded her face. How do you lose words, Grandpa? she asked. They took them away, he answered. She thought for a moment. Where did they take them? she asked. Where they took all of us, he said. Away from home, away from laughter and soft words, away from our mothers who cried for us. She reached for his gnarled hand. Who took you away, Grandpa? she asked quietly. Men and women dressed in black. Talking to us with words we did not know, he answered. They reached home and sat on the stairs together. Where did they take you, Grandpa? she asked. Away to a school that was cold and lonely, where angry white faces raised their voices in their hands when we used our words, he answered. They took our words and locked them away, punished us until we forgot them, until we sounded like them. Harsh, sharp words, so different from the sound of our beautiful ones. She touched his weathered face, tried to wipe the sadness away with her soft hands. She looked down at her lap and handed him the dream catcher that she had made for her room. You take this, Grandpa, she said. Maybe it will help you find your words again. He smiled at her, his granddaughter, and touched her innocent face, a face that had never known hard words or raised hands. He smiled and kissed her head. The next day, she skipped out of school again, smiling widely at her grandfather. She stopped in front of him and took a deep breath. Tons Nimisum, she said. His eyes widened. She smiled brighter than the sun. I found your words, Grandpa, she said. She pulled a tattered, well-worn paperback out of her book bag. Introduction to Cree, it said. My teacher helped me find this for you at the library. He reached for it, his hand shaking, opened it, feeling the soft, much-loved pages under his fingers. Nosum, he whispered. Granddaughter. The word felt familiar in his mouth. It felt like his home, his mother. He turned the pages of the book carefully. Lucy knew again, book. He turned another, word after word. Pikisquin, language. 
his words, pages and pages of them. He looked at his granddaughter, his Mosin. Thank you, Tinky, he said. Will you read to me, she asked, taking his hand in hers and leading him home. Will you teach me your words? His heart danced as he nodded, holding the book against his chest. The church has done good things in the world, but the church has also done really bad things in the world. Before you were born, but still not that long ago, the church made children just like you go to school far away from home. These indigenous children slept at school and almost never got to see their families. They weren't allowed to speak their languages, and often the people who were supposed to take care of them hurt them. Last week, the bodies of 215 children were found buried at one of these schools. They died at school, and nobody told their families what happened. We can't change what the church did in the past, but we can change what the church does now. We have two jobs. Our first job is to learn about what the church did and show others that we are thinking about what the church did. One of the ways people show others that they are thinking about what the church did is by wearing orange. This is because one of the children, Phyllis Webstad, who went to one of these schools, had a new orange shirt for school that her grandmother gave her, and it was taken away. Our second job is to make things better for indigenous people now. One of the bad things that's happening to indigenous people now is women and girls are going missing and dying, just like lots of the children at these schools died. One of the ways people show others that they are thinking about those women and girls is by hanging red dresses outside. I've combined those ideas by hanging orange clothing outside. Another way you could show other people that you are thinking about those children is by hanging orange ribbons from a tree. Kuntari Children's Choir hung orange ribbons from two trees at church, and I hung orange ribbons from a tree in my backyard. These schools were all over Canada. The Sarsi Residential School was close to Calgary. Here are the names of some children who went to that school, along with the dates they died. Bertie Weasel wrote, Billy Big Plume, Bernard Starlight, Billy Stabbing First, Albert Big Plume. Bobby Many Wounds. Billy Slay. Walter Big Crow. Willie Medicine. Robert running in the middle. Walter Weaselhorn. Simon Big Road. Tom Ryder. Sarah Knight, Sophie Sarcy Woman,
Edgar calf rope. Nellie Knight. Pat Dodging Horse. Mary Yellow Lodge. Pierre Bulldog Fly. Lizzie Many Horses. Ralph crowded that way. Fanny Grasshopper. Leo Sleeping Wolf. Joss Big Prairie Head. Reginald Starlight. Fanny River Woman. John, Sarcy Reserve. Joe Manapan. Jack Big Prairie Head. Daisy Dodging Norris. James Crow Shield. Jane Many Shields. Leo Crow Chief. Daniel Dog. And all those children who are unnamed. Another way you could show other people that you are thinking about the children who went to these schools is by making a memorial on your front step. Some things you could include in this memorial are orange things, a doll or a stuffed animal, a pair of children's shoes, flowers, or a candle. I've also included a book that is partially in Cree, a language some of these children spoke, and a picture of some of the children who went to the Sarsi Residential School. By now you might be wondering, how does this relate to our faith? Well, first of all, God made everyone unique for a reason, and these schools didn't respect that. The Bible also talks about two kinds of relationships, our relationship with God and our relationships with each other. For example, think about the Ten Commandments. Some of them talk about how we should treat God, and some of them talk about how we should treat each other. There's a verse in Matthew that says we should say sorry to people who are upset with us before we worship God. Finally, consider the story of Isaiah. When God needed someone to talk to people who were doing wrong things, Isaiah said, here I am. We can be like Isaiah and say here I am in relation to healing the relationship between the church and Canada's indigenous people. Today I would like to sing, 
a children's blessing song, which was gifted to us by Cheryl Sawapagaham, who is of Cree and Demi descent. The song is a song, song to be sung as a blessing for children or as a time when children need extra special care. And we sing this song in honor of the 215. <laughs> 